Joy in the city. Joy in your life. Joy in your family. And joy everywhere in Jesus' name. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. From the land of honor and integrity comes two in one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, the Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Professionals, titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at 0600 hours GMT, all broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Are you tired? He is an evangelist. Amen. Are you ready to give some time tonight? Because we are talking on something very important. It's the arm of the Lord. And that arm of the Lord is going to touch you in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you, and that is what I tell them in those countries when I get there, that you get ready. If you are blind, get ready to see. If you are lame, get ready to walk. And if there is any problem in your body, that problem doesn't belong to you. You will throw it up and give it to who it belongs to, and you will be free in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Almighty God, we thank you tonight. We bless your name because we know you are here. We welcome you here. We accept your power here. We exalt the Lord Jesus Christ here. And we know that we are going to see the mighty hand of the Lord in our lives in Jesus' name. Much, much more than we have heard. Much, much more than we have seen before. Much more than we have experienced before. I pray that you'll do for your children tonight in Jesus' name. Those testimonies, I pray, Lord, you'll make it real in the lives of those who are here tonight in Jesus' name. Begin to work. During the message, walk in the lives of your people. During the prayer, walk in the lives of your people. The person there that has the venereal disease, I command right now, that venereal disease come out in Jesus' name. And I pray for that young man that has the pain in the private part of the body. And I'm commanding that pain and that swelling there that you vanish right now in Jesus' name. The fellow with the pain in your head there at the back of the head. I'm commanding that that pain in the back of the head will vanish away in Jesus' name. I'm asking for that person over there in a hall three that is watching the bed at night, a young man. And I'm asking that that watching of the bed will vanish away right now in Jesus' name. The person on my right hand here in hall one that is having the pile, I'm commanding that God will touch you right now. And that pile will vanish away in Jesus' name. The fellow over there between hall six that is having the pain in the bone. I'm asking that the pain in the bone will vanish away in Jesus' name. Uh, the fellow that has the backache, I'm asking, oh Lord, that will touch that individual right now. That backache, vanish away in Jesus' name. I see that a young person holding your tummy because of the pain of the ulcer. And I pray that the mighty power of the Lord will touch you right now. And that pain and that sickness, infirmity of the ulcer, vanish away in Jesus' name. The fellow that has been tormented by hearing voices, and the voices are turning you to another person. 
and you are not yourself, and you cannot contain yourself, I command that those voices you are hearing vanish away in Jesus' name. I'm asking for that person that is uh, scratching the body because of the itching, and you'll be scratching until blood will be coming out. In fact, it becomes a public shame because when you do it, uh, people are looking at you, and you, you are lost in the activity of scratching, that you don't even know people are watching you. That embarrassing thing in your life, I command it right now, be removed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I'm asking that Tonight, you are going to do wonderful things, sir. And you will deliver the oppressed. You will set the people free. You will heal them of their sicknesses. They will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We are not going to speak uh, to you. You can sit down. Uh, too long tonight. I'm just going to uh, give you some scriptures and then we'll go into the business of the night which is praying and receiving from the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 53 and reading from verse 1 because we're talking about the arm of the Lord. The prophet speaks about the arm of the Lord and he talks about the arm of the Lord being revealed. In Isaiah 53, verse 1, who has believed our reports? And then it says, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Actually, the prophet is asking two questions. And the two questions is uh, demanding a response and answer from you. Do you notice what he said? He talks about a report. And number two, he talks about a revealing, a revelation. And if you can understand those two things, number one, the report. Number two, a revealing or revelation. Then there's going to be a third thing, which is called a realization. Look at the verse again. Who has believed our report? The prophets have been busy making a report. Of the good things the Lord has been doing. And they have been making the reports of the miracles and the wonders that the Lord has been performing. Actually, as you look at the pages of scripture, you will see that God is a mighty, powerful God. And we hear the reports of his wonders, of his miracles from the very first page of the Bible. He said, let there be, and it, and it was so. And he created the whole universe by his mighty power. Who has believed that report? In Exodus, he told Pharaoh, let my people go. And then Pharaoh was proving stubborn. And they not dealt with him. Miracles took place. Who has believed our report? And Joshua got to the land of Canaan. And the Jericho walls fell down flat. Supernaturally and miraculously, that's the report. Who has believed our report? And then we find David, that David threw the stone and Goliath came down. And then the question is, who has believed our report? And then you find that from generation to generation, from one era to the other, the Lord was working miracles and the prophets were telling the people, our God has not changed. Our God is mighty. Our God is still walking. And when they told the testimonies, then they said, who has believed our report? Number one, there is a report we're hearing. Number two, there is a revelation. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? When you believe the report, then the arm of the Lord will be revealed unto you. And then there will be a realization in your life. It was revealed to Israel, that arm of the Lord, and the bondage was broken. And when the arm of the Lord is revealed to you tonight, the bondage in your life will be broken in Jesus' name. The arm of the Lord was revealed in the wilderness, and their needs were supernaturally supplied. Water came for them out of the rock. And manna came from heaven. 
when the arm of the Lord is revealed to you, there will be a supernatural supply of all your needs in Jesus' name. That arm of the Lord was revealed against Pharaoh and his chariots, and they all were drowned in the Red Sea. And when the arm of the Lord is revealed unto you, all the things that torment you and trouble you, they will be drowned in the sea of God's forgetfulness in Jesus' name. And then Christ came. And the arm of the Lord was revealed through him. And there were many miracles of healing and deliverance and salvation. And when the arm of the Lord through Christ is revealed unto you, then you are going to find that there will be miracles in your life. And that miracle, you will see tonight. In the short time that we have, we're going to talk about, number one, the meaning. The meaning of the arm of the Lord. What does it mean? As the prophet spoke about, the arm of the Lord. The meaning. Number two, miracles through the arm of the Lord. Miracles through the arm of the Lord. Number three, manifestations of the arm of the Lord. Manifestations of the arms of the Lord. Number one, what do we mean? What does the scripture mean? What did Isaiah mean when he spoke about the arm of the Lord? Let the scripture speak for itself so that you will understand what the prophet is talking about when he talks about the arm of the Lord in Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah Chapter 32, verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and uh, the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. You can see the association, the relationship, the link, the interdependence between the power of the Lord, the might of the Lord, and the arm of the Lord. The arm of the Lord is the power of the Lord. The arm of the Lord is the strength of the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter 27 and in verse 5. And that arm of the Lord is so strong, is so mighty, is so great, and it's so supernatural, in fact, it's able to create everything that you see, and even the things you cannot see, and uh, we are told it's, there's nothing too hard for him. Jeremiah 27, and in verse 5, I have made the earth, and man, and the beast, that are upon the ground by my great power and by my stretched out arm. Do you see the connection again between the power of the Lord, the might of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, and the arm of the Lord? What's the meaning then when he talks about the arm of the Lord? He's talking about the power, the might, the strength of the Lord. In Psalm 77, Psalm 77, reading from verse 13 all through to verse 15. 77, 13. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Anyone as great? I said anyone as great as our God? Thou art the God that doest what? Doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Now you understand. He's talking about doing wonders. And he's talking about the strength of the Lord. He wraps everything up in verse 15. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people the sons of jacob and joseph it's talking therefore whenever you hear a mention of this arm of the lord that's the strength of the lord that's the power of the lord and that is the uh, ability of the lord you wonders and i believe that tonight 
you will see that arm of the Lord doing wonders in your life in Jesus' name. In 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. And in verse 35. 2 Kings 17, 35. With whom the Lord had made a covenant. 30, verse 36, please. But the Lord who brought you out, up out of the land of Egypt, with great power, and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. You see the connection every time. And it's very clear to you now the meaning of the arm of the Lord. It means the power, the strength, the might of the Lord. You return to Isaiah chapter 20, chapter 53, and in verse 1, and it's asking us the question, who has believed our report? Who has believed the report of the wonders of the Lord? Who has believed the report, the testimonies of the greatness, the might, the power, the strength of the Lord? And then it says, and to whom? Which means, if you will believe that report, if you will believe that testimony, then the arm of the Lord will be revealed unto you. And you know now that the arm of the Lord simply means the power, the might of the Lord. And when that power of the Lord, that arm of the Lord is revealed unto you, something is going to take place in your life. That then leads us to point number two, miracles through the arm of the Lord. When the arm of the Lord is revealed to you, there is something definite that is going to take place. In Exodus chapter 6, Exodus chapter 6, and in verse 6, you are going to see the connection now between the miracles and the arm of the Lord. And once the arm of the Lord is revealed, then miracles are going to take place in your life and your family. Exodus 6, 6. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgment. Here you can see the connection. That when the arm of the Lord begins to operate in your life, then the Lord said, I will, I will, and I will. And when God says, I will, it's a decision taken by God. And there is nothing that can change it. And Pharaoh thought he'll keep the children of Israel in Egypt. But he couldn't do it. Because the arm of the Lord was stretched out. And he said, I will bring you out from under the bodies of the Egyptians. Do you know that tonight? The Lord will bring you out from under the burden. From under the curse. From under every yoke, the Lord will bring you out as he stretch out his arm in Jesus' name. And then he says, I will rid you of their bondage. Any sign, any symptom of bondage in your life, everything is going to be broken tonight in Jesus' name. And then he says, I will redeem you. It means if you have been a slave to the devil, you have been a slave to the evil spirit. I'm going to get you back from the slave market. I will redeem you. Exodus chapter 15. Exodus 15 verse 16. It says, Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as steel as silver till the people thy people pass over. O Lord, till the people pass over, which thou hast redeemed, which thou hast purchased. You see, the Lord has purchased us, and is now telling us that fear and dread will come upon your enemies. I said fear and dread will come upon your enemies. 
by the greatness of thine arm. That is by the greatness of the, of the miracles that the Lord will work by his arm. Those enemies shall be still as a stone. And then it says, till thy people pass over. Those are the words again. We are passing over. I said we are passing over. Nothing will keep us in bondage. We are passing over in Jesus' name. Because you see, miracles are associated. Miracles are attached. Well, the stretching out of the, of the arm of the Lord. In Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, looking back to the history of the children of Israel and telling us the mighty miracle that uh, the Lord did for the children of Israel as a result of the outstretched arm. Acts chapter 13 and in verse 17. It says, The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and with an high arm brought he them out of it. His arm with an high arm he brought them out of it. With that same arm, the Lord is going to bring you out. There is no power that can keep you down. There is no evil that will be able to have a final, total, complete, permanent um, power over your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 89. Psalm 89 verse 21. With whom my hand shall be established. Mine arm also shall strengthen him. Are you weak? He will strengthen you tonight. And then he says, the enemy shall not exact upon him. Nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Affliction will be forgotten in your life. And I will beat down his foes, his enemies, before his face, and plague them that hate him, just because of the arm of the Lord. In John chapter 12, this John chapter 12, the two verses there, verses 37 and 38, tell us very clearly, that miracles are attached, associated with the arm of the Lord. John 12, 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, may be fulfilled which he spake, Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You can see then that there is a connection between the miracles and the arm of the Lord. And what surprised the believers in the New Testament is that as the arm of the Lord was revealed. And Jesus did so many miracles before them that the people of Israel, religious people did not believe. And then they called to mind the words of Isaiah the prophet, that no wonder Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? If they do not believe the reports, the miracles will not take place in their lives. If they believe the reports, then the arm of the Lord will be revealed unto them. Miracles will take place. Point number three. Manifestations of the arm of the Lord. Do you believe? Then that arm of the Lord will be manifested before you today. As it happened to other people, it will happen to you as well in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 40 and in verse 10, Isaiah 40 verse 10, Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand. He will come tonight. And his arm shall rule for him. 
Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He's soon going to start work. And when he starts that work tonight, he has started already. I believe it will touch you. You will not leave this place the same as you came in, in Jesus' name. Isaiah 52, and in verse 10. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. He has made bare, he has revealed, he has manifested his holy arm, powerful, mighty arm, and everyone, all the earth shall see the salvation, the deliverance, the redemption of our God. I pray and I believe tonight you will see that manifestation in Jesus' name. I told you it wasn't going to be a, a long message. Now in Jeremiah chapter 32 again. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17. Jeremiah 32 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. Think about it now. Creating the whole world. Compare that with the sickness you have to be removed. The little problem you have is not up to one over one million. Infinitesimal fraction. Negligible fraction. Of what the Lord has done by his mighty arm. If you are blind and you want to receive sight... That miracle of receiving sight is not up to one over one million of the great things the Lord has done by his mighty arm. If you are lame and you need to rise up and you want him to straighten your leg, strengthen your leg, and then begin to walk, that's nothing compared with what the Lord has done already by his great mighty arm. And if it is that you need a deliverance, what comparison will you make between that deliverance and the deliverance of the children of Israel? Three million of them, he brought them out of the land of Egypt. That's why we join Jeremiah and we say, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. There is nothing too hard for our God. Our God is ready to walk in your life. That's why it says in Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call unto me. And I will answer thee. He wants to answer you tonight. Make it. Make your request as big as possible. As great as possible. Whatever it is that you have. I want you to just get ready and get prepared. The Lord is going to do it right now in Jesus' name. It says, call unto me and I will answer thee. And show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. This is the time. You've seen the meaning of the arm of the Lord. You've seen that miracles come through the arm of the Lord. And now you are ready for the manifestations of the arm of the Lord. Let's rise up. The manifestation of the arm of the Lord is available for you right now. And uh, you will see it in your life. And you are going to taste of the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. And I told you already. And I'm ready to you in the word of God. Jeremiah cried out. Great exclamation. He said, ah, Lord God, I look at your power, I look at what you have done, and I see you have created the whole universe with your great power and stretch out harm. What is it I'm asking which will be too hard for you to do? There is nothing too hard for you to do. Open your mouth and tell the Lord there is nothing too hard for him to do.
Nothing, nothing, nothing too hard for him to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray together now. And you are going to expect that the Lord is going to manifest His arm in your life right now. And I want you to be very serious. I'm very sincere to you. The Lord wants to work mightily in your own life. Don't think about other people. Just think about your own life. And whatever the problem is, there's nothing too hard for our God to do. And the Lord doesn't need too much time. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 1 hour. He doesn't need that much. Before he does that thing in your life. One thing I can assure you of. Is that if you'll cooperate with the Lord. That problem you brought in here. You'll not take it away with you in Jesus name. Because the arm of the Lord. Will be revealed. In your own life. And. Uh, I hope some of you, the majority of you at least, should be familiar with the way the Lord leads me to minister. And um, I want uh, those in front of all seven, if you can please, uh, please obey me. I just move out of all seven in front. I want to bring the testimony people there tonight. All the ushers, uh, please help. While we are clearing the front part of all seven, we're telling the Lord what is it you want. You want your blind eyes to open, tell the Lord. You are lame, you want to walk, tell the Lord. You have any infirmity in your body, you want the Lord to take away, tell the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. First of all, I need to give you instructions. And uh, just like a brother who gave testimonies from Cameroon, as they shared with us, sometimes because we're here together in Nigeria, you may not... Uh, really appreciate and I believe you do but you may not appreciate enough what the Lord is doing and uh, if he had time he will tell you that in Cameroon I think all the nights I ministered the longest time I spent in prayer would have been about 10 minutes all together in the crusade I just Pray for everything all together at the same time. Blind, lame, deaf, pain, whatever. And I told them to check up immediately. And then hunch back, left, goiter, left, paralysis, left, blindness, left. Just the same prayer that covered everything. Because uh, those people were really expecting. In fact, in Cameroon, 
Now, somebody that came from United States of America, he knows about it. The fellow had a great problem with her daughter. And then wrote to one of the American healing evangelists that is known over there to be very popular with them. And described the details of the problem of the daughter. And she happened to be a partner, financial partner to that ministry. But the leader of that ministry wrote to the woman and said, I'm sorry. The kind of problem you have described coming from Africa is too much. is not the kind of thing I can deal with. And then the man, the evangelist, gave that woman my name and said, please, uh, I see you are desperate. Go to Nigeria. And uh, if you meet uh, so and so, mention my name and another name, that he'll be able to help you. And then the woman being a Cameroonian heard that I was coming to Cameroon. Oh, and said, what a wonderful thing for me. And came all the way from the United States of America uh, to uh, Douala where we had the program. And she slept in the hostel. You can imagine that. Because she was really desperate. And that's how desperate those people outside Nigeria are. And I believe that here tonight, you are not tired. I said, you are not tired. So let's uh, now pray. And whichever way the Lord leads me, you will accept the word of the Lord. You will accept the miracle of the Lord. And the moment you accept it, it will be done in Jesus' name. And uh, you'll check up what the problem is before I pray. Then I'll pray, and after the prayer, you will check up yourself, because something definite is going to happen. Are you ready? Let's pray. You lay your hand upon yourself. Whatever the problem is, whether I mention it or not, I don't know if I will mention it. I may. I don't know yet. Whether I mention it or not, immediately after the prayer, you'll check up yourself and that thing would have gone. Then you will check up yourself and you will see. And as you see it, and you know it, very, very definite thing, and you'll come out here. Don't wait for any other special prayer. There's a special prayer. If you are blind, there's a time. If you are lame, there's a time. If anyone is deaf and dumb, there's a time. You have any internal growth, this is a time. You are tormented by evil spirit. Don't fight with them. Don't, don't say anything. Don't even try to say, I want to have faith. I want to have faith. Don't worry about that tonight now. Just, just stay where you are and just receive. And as we finish, you'll see it. And then as you see it, you'll come to the front of all seven. Please, if you're outside the halls, this is not the time to talk with anybody now. This is a time of the manifestation of the arm of the Lord. Things are happening already. Please let's close our eyes. You lay your hand upon yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I welcome you tonight. Your might, your power, your anointing, your unction, your authority. You assured me, Lord, that if I bind anything on earth, it's bound in heaven. If I lose anything on earth, it's loosed in heaven. And you said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In your name, they cast out devils. They speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And you also said, we'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. 
And Lord, you know I cannot lay hands on these thousands of people all at the same time. And that's why I've told them to take those believing hands and lay it upon themselves. Therefore, Lord, I pray that your arm, stretched out arm, will walk mightily here tonight in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, since you are not going to deceive your people, and since you will never fail, and since the devil can never resist your power, I pray that your power will come down now, and will touch, and will transform, and will heal, and will deliver everyone in Jesus' name. If you have any swelling in your body, this is your time. That swelling of an ear, that swelling of fibroid, that swelling of goiter, that swelling of um, hunchback, I command you right now, be removed in Jesus' name. Any part of the body, I command the arm of the Lord to touch you right now. That swelling, that goiter, and that hunchback, and that ear, and that swollen tummy, that elephantiasis in the leg, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. Lord, I pray right now. For anyone that is having any sickness causing pain, that called tuberculosis, I command, be cleared away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that well person that has a respiratory problem and the asthma, I command that that asthma will clear away right now and all the drugs we have been using will not be necessary again. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking for that anemic person. It appears there is no blood and you are dizzy and it appears that you cannot hold yourself. You are so weak. You walk a little distance and you are almost a flattened. It's as if you are going to pass up. I command strength and blood, vitality, vigor to enter into your body right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray. For the one that's always having stomach problems, stomach problem every time, holding tummy every time. Lord, I pray that you perform an inward internal operation. And that stomach problem will vanish away in Jesus' name. That also you cannot remain there. You see me standing here and I command that also shall be removed. What are you doing there? Also, I command you in the name of the Lord, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for that back ache and the pain of the chest. I'm commanding right now that ache and that pain, you have no right to be there. Be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that uh, fellow that has the pulse coming, the pulse coming out uh, of a part of the body. And that uh, sore that is going from bad to worse and refuses to be healed. I command that sore to dry up. I command that sore to be healed. And I command that uh, pause coming out, be stopped, be, uh, be removed right now, in Jesus' name. The odor, terrible odor that's coming from the mouth of that individual, I command that right now, that terrible bad odor, stop right now, be removed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I'm asking that the fellow that has uh, the pain in the center of the tummy, in the navel, and if uh, you mistakenly, accidentally touch uh, the place uh, without deliberately doing it, the pain will be so much. I command that that pain and that sickness be removed in Jesus' name. That fellow that received uh, an injection before and there's an abscess now. And it appears the place is always having the problem. Be removed in Jesus' name. The fellow that had an accident and... Uh, uh, outwardly it appears that you are healed but every time you still feel the internal pain there i command that uh, broken objects that may be there and uh, foreign bodies that may be there and whatever is causing the pain there be removed in jesus name the fellow that is always having that migraine headache and when it comes it's like they are pounding yam in your head 
It's like they want to break the head in pieces. Water will be coming out of your eyes. You'll be crying like a baby. And you say, control yourself, control yourself. You say, you don't know what is happening to me. I command that pain and that ache be removed in Jesus' name. That fellow that is having the epilepsy there, you epileptic spirit, I command you epilepsy, come out in Jesus' name. And I command the epileptic spirit, you will never come back again. I command that lady, be free in Jesus' name. That young man, be free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for these individuals that have things working about in the body. You slap this part of the body as if there's something there. And as if there's insect there. And uh, you are troubled all the time. Sometimes you even remove your clothes. And you examine it to see if something is biting you from the clothes. I command that that evil spirit. That tormenting, confusing spirit. That is causing all that kind of attack. Be removed in Jesus name. Those people that are having that oppression in the night and they think will be pressing you down and wanting to destroy your life, I command that oppression. I command that thing that is uh, troubling you at night will not allow you to sleep, will not allow you to enjoy your life. And when you wake up in the morning, it's like you have been walking all through the night. It's like uh, you have been running a race all through the night. And you are more tired in the morning than when you slept at night. That mysterious tiredness and that activity of the devil in your life, I command right now, be removed in Jesus' name. That fellow that is always seeing a death in the dream, and it's either they are shooting you, it's either you are drowning, or you are seeing an old grandmother that is dead and is saying, uh, I come to take you, uh, why don't you prepare? And then when you wake up, you are afraid, and already you are making up your mind as if you are not going to live long. That spirit of death, I cancel it from your life in Jesus' name. You spirit of death, I command that you lose your hold on this individual in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for that individual to appear. Sometimes when you sit down, then you'll stand up as if you start on a nail. You start on a pin. And then before long, you'll find the pin almost pricking you in different parts of the body. I command right now that that evil spirit that is acting like that in your life, just wanting to run you almost mental. I command those sensations, I command those symptoms, be removed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I'm asking for that individual that has a problem of a memory failure. You'll be talking like this in the middle of a sentence. You have forgotten the first part of the sentence. Sometimes you are talking like this and you appear to be communicating and then you forgot where you began and it just fades away and your memory will fail you and uh, people will be wondering then later it will come back as if they switch you off and they switch you on again. I command that failure in your memory. Be removed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray you touch their brain, you touch their mind, whatever is causing the switching off and switching on, I pray that by your mighty power, you remove it in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for this person that is having the perennial kata. It's always there. The kata is always there. And it's always like, it's like you are cold every time. Even when other people are sweating and feeling hot. Kata almost every, every, every season and every part of the year. I command right now that kata that is troubling you be removed in Jesus' name. I'm asking for that individual that is sensing that he has a mental problem. That woman that is sensing that she has a mental problem. And I command you, spirit of insanity, how can you stay there? When the arm of the Lord is revealed already, therefore I command that that uh, sensation of mental problem insanity be removed in Jesus' name. You spirit of insanity, I cast you out. And you will never come back to this place again in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are blind. You are the one that opens the eyes of the blind. Because you are the light of the world. You are not darkness at all. So I command the cataract covering your eyes. The blackness and the darkness in your eyes. And whatever it is, the bandage of the devil that binds you up, you cannot see. I command those scales and that bandage to be removed right now. Open your eyes and see in Jesus' name. 
You spirit of blindness, I command you, you cannot remain there. Open your eyes and see in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have withered hands, and I command that that hand will receive the freshness of power from the Lord. And that with that hand, that stroke, stretch out the hand, be made whole in Jesus' name. Those who have one leg shorter than the other, I pray that the Lord will touch that short leg. It will grow out to be equal with the other. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are paralyzed. And either one leg or the two legs, they don't have any strength and they shrink. And it appears that you cannot coordinate your movement and your walking. I pray the arm of the Lord will be revealed unto you. And the power of God will touch you right now. And that paralysis and that stroke be removed in Jesus' name. And I command those who have such a problem in coordinating their walking. Those who are lame, those who are paralyzed. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are deaf. I pray for those who are dumb. And I'm asking right now. That the mighty power of God will touch you. Your vocal cords will be loosened and you will speak out in Jesus' name. And then your eardrums will be renewed. And whatever has made you to be deaf, everything will be taken away. Hear the sound coming out now in Jesus' name. The people there are see if you are carrying a heavy load and you are feeling the, uh, the tension and the strain of the load on your neck every time. I command that that invisible load of the devil will be taken away from you right now in Jesus' name. The man that has the gonorrhea, venereal disease there and you urinate blood and it's so it's real pain that when you go to the toilet you are really not yourself. You come out and people look at your eyes as if you've been crying there in the toilet. I command that venereal disease to leave your body right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. And the woman that has the infection and the bleeding, I command that the power of the Lord will touch you. That bleeding, that infection will stop in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for those who have gone for tests. And uh, you have, uh, yes, like you are HIV positive. And now you are prayed because you know the thing that is going to follow. I arrest that situation right now. And Lord, I pray that definite tangible miracle will come upon them. And all the virus and all the suffering symptoms that uh, points the way, that points the hand into HIV and AIDS, remove it in Jesus' name. I pray for that individual with the spirit of fear in your family. It's, it's appearing, it's appear, it appears that there's such a load, an invisible thing. You are happy outside the family. You are happy when you are out. Immediately you enter like this, there's something that covers you. And there is a fear that takes over your life. And you are miserable within your own family. But outside you are a little bit happy. I command that that thing that makes you miserable within the family. And that spirit of fear that's taking hold of your life. Be broken right now in Jesus name. Everyone Lord I pray. Whether it's all one or all two. Three, four, five, six or seven. Or even eight, nine or ten. Or those who are outside. I pray Lord there will be an explosion right now. And I pray there will be a demonstration of your power now. There will be a manifestation of your mighty hand right now. Everyone, as we say the final amen, and they check up themselves, they will see what the Lord has done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please don't sit down yet. Why am I standing and you are sitting down? I'm older than you. Are you tired? This is the time to check up yourself now because a lot has happened. Really check up. I mean really, really check up. And as to see what the Lord has done, you must check up yourself. Find out. You see that what was swollen there before is gone. The pain there is gone. The tuberculosis, the cough is gone. 
the asthma, it's gone. And you see that the pain either in the chest or the back or in any other part of the body is gone. And then you are blind, you open your eyes and then you look around and you see people. And then you were dead before. If somebody was deaf, you get near them and, you know, talk to them and make sound and let them respond. Or you couldn't walk before, you'll stand up and you'll walk, check up yourself. And you see, as you see what the Lord has done, you will say, praise the Lord. And then we'll rejoice with you. But then you must be sure because you'll be coming to hall seven. Check up right now, the miracle is there. Check up and come out. Check up and come out. Check up and come out. 